Hello and welcome back. Second lecture on the beta function. Today we're going to be looking at the trigonometric definition of the beta function. Very uh, useful. Comes up an awful lot. And uh, I haven't actually written it down. So I'll add it perhaps here at the very end or maybe I'll put it in a box once I'm, I'm done. So this is now the trigonometric definition of the beta function. We start with the beta function as we know it. Beta of m, comma n is defined as the integral from 0 to 1, x to the power of m minus 1, 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1 dx. So this is the first line here. That's how the beta function is defined. We're going to use a substitution. We're going to bring trig signs and causes in there. So it doesn't really matter whether we call x the sign or the cause, but not quite um, the, the sign or the cause. Sine squared is what we want. So the sine of theta is in fact equal to the square root of x. So for these limits is the positive square root. So, <clears throat> and we're going to, of course, get the dx. dx is two sine theta cos theta d theta. And what else do we want? We want the limits and how they map zero and one. Zero um, for the x. It means theta has to be zero, and in order to get a one in there, it has to be pi over two. Um, in fact, we should really be looking at this because this is the the substitution. Actually, is not any of these. I have spoken at length about this type of substitutions. <coughs> Pardon me. At a level, the substitution is in fact theta is the arc sine of the square root of x. But of course. We want it in that form or that form in order to substitute in there. So if you look at this, the answer is simply pi over 2. Okay, so once we put this um, bits in, let's see what happens. 0 to pi over 2. This is now a sine squared of theta to the m minus 1. And that's a 1 minus. No cause. <coughs> <coughs> So bad, it's like coughing. Like this. To the n minus 1. And then we have 2 sine theta cos theta d theta. All the bits. That's my dx there. And I put the correct quantities. Okay. That's the 2 pulled outside. We're going to write this now as sine theta 2n minus 2 <clears throat> the power and then we need to put a cos squared theta I should really have done them together it's a bit stupid really but it doesn't matter so I'm wasting a line here unnecessarily so that's the sine of theta to the power of 2 and minus 2. Let's put the other sign next to it. That's this bit here. Then we got the cos of theta to the power of 2 and minus 2 with another cos next to it. I forgot the d theta there. <clears throat> and we have our results. Already, uh, sorry, our result, not our results. I'm going to write it in pink so I can actually say the beta of m and n is in fact two times the integral from zero to pi over two sines and causes and the power will be two n minus one and two n minus one d theta. Very important result. <coughs> Let me write it perhaps on the side here because I want to show you how you can actually use it so <clears throat> perhaps with an example I think that's more than enough for today beta of m comma n is two lots zero to pi over two and then we got a sine theta a cos of theta with respect to theta and the powers notice the difference um so we, we don't make a mistake between the two definitions. Um, m minus 1, n minus 1, but here is 2m minus 1 and 
n minus 1. Okay, let's look at an example now using this result. You know, it's actually, this result's very, very useful. It's the result that um, in higher level maths, if I have some type of integrals, I use it so often because these integrals will give a lot of the time and it's the best way to evaluate them. So suppose, um, <clears throat> let's uh, look search for one of them. We got 0 to pi over 2 sine to the 5 of theta cos to the 4 of theta d theta. Uh, how we do something like that? <coughs> of course, today we're going to do with a beta function, but um, uh, without the beta function, for something like this, either we have to get a reduction formula with sine and cos, both of them in, or perhaps use complex numbers, which is going to be even longer. Um, it's a nightmare. But that is, in fact, we can actually write it as a half, two lots of sine theta and a cos theta, d theta, half times two of course cancel. This is the two that in the definition I have it outside. Now I have it inside, it makes no difference. And what is the powers of this thing here? So if you look at the two m minus one, you should be able to see by inspection is equal to five in this particular case. So two m must be equal to six. So m is equal to three. So this is in fact two times three minus one. And you should be able to see that the other one is two times five over two minus one. So in fact, this is a half, that's the half outside. And now this is the beta of which two quantities. Two m minus one, so that's three from this bit here. That's your m, two m minus one. Two n minus one is of course, 5 over 2. And evaluating that, we're going to the relationship between beta and gamma. So that's a half at the front. So that's the gamma of 3 times the gamma of 5 over 2 divided by the gamma of um, 3, 2.5, 5.5, or 11 over 2. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do some workings here to remind you, this is work from the gamma now, this is the recurrent relation. So the gamma of 11 over 2, this I will pies and I will cancel part of that. So the, this is now 1 less, 9 over 2, gamma of 9 over 2, which is equal to 9 over 2, that's now 1 less, 7 over 2 times the gamma of 7 over 2, which is equal to 9 over 2 times 7 over 2, and now that's one less, five over two times the gamma of five over two. Do I need to go further than that? No, because of course, once I get the gamma of five over two in my denominator, I will cancel it. So that's equal to a half. The gamma of three is a two factorial, um, which we should know again from the work on gamma. Uh, this will live as it is because we going to, it's going to cancel. And this is now 9 over 2 times 7 over 2 times 5 over 2 times the gamma of 5 over 2. A couple of cancellations. First of all, that has gone and that has gone. And the two factorials is in fact 2, so we can cancel the half. So what have we got left now? Uh, we've got nothing left here. And that's 8 on the top. And on the bottom, we got 9 times 7 is 63. 63 times 5, 630, 315. So I make this 8 over 315. Um, I hope it's correct. And you saw the, the beauty and the power, in fact, of the beta function. I mean, this, I promise you, try to do this without, if you want to compare and contrast, try to do this particular integral without the beta function and just see how tedious and painful it is. For the time being, I think that's more than enough for today. I'm going to be signing out and I'll see you real soon. Bye.